Let's turn to John chapter 3. I'll read the whole chapter. John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it, list, where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. Mm -hmm. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath descended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, mm. because their deeds were evil. Yeah. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth come to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing, except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I say I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. And that and he that hath the bride is a bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath said to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. Um, 
title of my sermon today is simply salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation. Uh, you're gonna say, hey, Samson, you know what? We all preach here, we all know the gospel, we all know this. But uh, I'm telling you, this is the most important sermon ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I once had somebody tell me that eventually all churches died down, right? That's why we don't see any churches from the 1600s. And it all begins when a church begins to provide the gospel, mm -hmm. to provide salvation. Yep. And Sound Words is a great church, but I'm telling you that day that Sound Words begins to preach a false or provide or even uh, contaminate salvation, right. that is the same day Sound Words will begin to die. Right. <clears throat> Probably when this generation is all gone. But yeah, that's how it goes. So that's right. this is a very important someone. And as I preach, please go and look at the scriptures again, even if you are dirty, done because it's important. Amen. We have this nailed down. <clears throat> so, the foundation of this sermon is going to be the source of truth, the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please turn to Psalms 12, 6 to 7? Psalms 12, 6 to 7. there with you. The Bible says, the words of the Lord are pure words. Right. A silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from yes. this generation forever. Amen. The Bible says that the words of the Lord are pure words. That means every word that God speaks is pure. That's right. The word of God is our foundation. Everything that I'm going to say today going to come from the Word of God. If I say something that's from my lips, or my own thoughts, that might be wrong. I may be lying to you. But everything that I say that's from the Bible, from the King James Bible, from the Holy Scriptures, is absolutely true. True. Right. And that should be the basis of um, uh, our salvation. Should always be the Word of God. Uh, Isaiah 40, chapter 40, verse 6 to 8. Isaiah 40, 6 to 8. The Bible says, The voice say, Cry. And he say, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodness, goodness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. In other words, the word of the Lord shall stand forever. It's true. Yes. Um, just one more. John 14, 16. John 14. John chapter 14, verse 6. Sorry. John 14, verse 6. <clears throat> the Bible says, uh, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We know that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. The Word of God is the truth. And yes. that's what I'm going to be preaching from today. Um, so, that was a synopsis, an introduction to someone. Now, um, I want to begin this, this sermon from like first principles, okay? Yep. So, first thing to answer the question, um, I want to show you the fact that God made us and he made the whole world. And you'll see why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that. So let's turn to Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Bible says, um, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Um, Genesis 1.27. Genesis 1.27. Bible says, So God created man in his own image. Right. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Amen. Um, just to one last point. Genesis 2.27. Genesis chapter 2, 20, verse 27. Sorry. 2.7. Two, 2.7. Seven, two seven. Chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man 
of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So the whole point is, is that God made, made us, God made man, and now he made man and he also gave man free will. That's very important to know, that God gave us free will. Uh, Joshua 20, verse, chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. <clears throat> the Bible says, and if, it, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose, who, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in the land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. In other words, God gave man free will. He created man. He gave man free will. He says, hey, I'm not going to force you to do anything. You can feel free to serve other gods, or you can serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He's giving you uh, free will. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19. Again, on the point of free will, this is important, because what I'm trying to say here is that God did not make a robot mm -hmm. that just... Yeah. Right. doesn't have free will. <clears throat> Chapter 30, verses 19. The Bible says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life Amen. that both thou and thy seed may live. Mm -hmm. In other words, man, God gave man free will. Yes. Um, one last point to prove that. And this is an example of man exercising free will. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. <clears throat> the Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat, it, eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So once again, God is giving man free will. And here, he's actually uh, giving man an opportunity to exercise that free will. Right. Because God could have made man, put him in the garden and say, just everything, you can eat it. But here, he's actually giving man the opportunity to choose, based on his free will, that I'm not going to eat of this tree or I'm going to eat of this tree. So it's a real free will. You know, we men... We can make a, we can make let's say a computer program, you know, a, a program before. But when you make a program, it doesn't have free will. Right. It's going to do exactly what you told it. Yep. Only God can make free will. Can give, right. make something that has a free will, which is us human beings. Amen. Um, now, therefore, because it's God's creation, because He made it, as we are seeing, He decides the consequence for your free will. Mm -hmm. So God made us, point number one, he gives, he gives us free will, and now he's the creator, he's going to decide the consequence of what you do with your free will, right? Um, in this case, the consequence of sin, that's if you refuse to do what his will is. I uh, well, first want to define sin. What is sin? Go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. We're going to define what sin is. <clears throat> Bible says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Right. So the Bible defines sin as a transgression of the law. Um, from this definition, all men are sinners because all of us have transgressed the law. That's right. Now, the Holy God's consequence for sin, I'm going to show you in the Bible what God's consequence for sin is. And these are not my words. Um, let's go to Ezekiel 18.4. Ezekiel 18.4. Bible says, Behold, God speaking, Behold, all souls are mine. Which we already knew because he created us. It says, Behold, all souls are mine. 
As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Again, in verse 20, he says, For the soul, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, mm -hmm. neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Amen. Uh, Romans 6.23, if you could turn there, Romans 6.23. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. death. Yep. Um, that's only half the verse. But anyway, the point is, um, the wages of sin is death. Uh, she said it, this is like, and then Revelations 2014. The Bible says in Revelation 2014, mm -hmm. again, this is God telling us the consequence of our sin if we choose to sin. Uh, Revelation 2014, the Bible says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, and this is the second death. So, as we, have, we can see that God made man, he gives man a free will, you know, he can either choose to sin or not to sin. If man sins, God lays out the consequence for that because he made us. When you make something, you have power over it. Right. He says, look, the consequence for sin is to, is to die. Now, you may say, um, and I was once soul winning, and somebody said this to me. Say, you know what? I think that consequence is too harsh. Mm. Um, all I did is I just said one lie. So are you saying that um, just a seven-year-old kid who is innocent, if they lie, just going to be thrown in hell forever like that that just seems too harsh okay but um, you know what God is perfect and demands perfection right and in our mind you know if, our, if it was me being a judge or maybe you mm -hmm. you'd say that hey maybe all seven year olds go to heaven that's right or yeah. all monks or whatever they go right. to heaven but hey we're talking about God here mm -hmm. he is perfect and demands perfection amen the Bible says in Psalms 9 to 15 Psalms 92.15 Bible says To show that the Lord is upright He is my rock There is no unrighteousness in Him Amen. So there is no unrighteousness in God um, And He is upright Isaiah 6 Chapter 6 verse 3 says Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 Bible says, and one quite unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. The point is, is that, Job, that God is prophet, and there is um, you know, no unrighteousness in him. And also, one other thing that we need to know is that God's judgment is true and just. So when God says that, hey, all sinners deserve to go to hell, that is the truth, and that is just. Um, uh, Psalm 50, verse 6. Psalm chapter 50, verse 6. The Bible says, <clears throat> And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Mm -hmm. So God is the ultimate judge. Um, so, uh, because of that, Revelations 21.8, He's the ultimate judge, so he's the one who decides what the consequence for sin is. It's not us to decide that. It's not any human being. It's God who decides that. He has decided that um, all sinners deserve to go to hell, no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. um, Revelation 21.8, probably all know this. The ultimate consequence uh, for sin, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers, and idolaters and all liars shall yes. have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death in other words all liars all men deserve to go there and that's what God's judgment is these are not my words I didn't come up with the Bible God says in his word that all men who have sinned before shall have their part in the lake of fire they deserve to go there right now 
Uh, that's pretty bad news. Yep. But there is also some good news. Well, that's also good news because you know the fact that God is judge is good news. You know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, the Bible says that God is love in First John four eight. Um. So because obviously because uh, we all deserve to go to hell, the Bible says in First John four eight. <coughs> This is a very comforting scripture. It says, He that loveth knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. So this is the solution that God gave so that we can all have hope of going to heaven. The solution is called Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, who is Jesus Christ? Whenever I'm soul winning, I like to define who Jesus Christ is. Um, go to Matthew 3.17. Matthew 3.17 This is God speaking. It says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Good. So that's who Jesus Christ is. He's the Son of God. Another thing is uh, Jesus Christ is also God himself. 1 Timothy 3.16 The Bible says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Uh, another definition of who Jesus Christ is, is can, can be seen in Revelation 19, chapter, uh, verse 11. Yeah. Revelation 19, 11. Um, The word of God says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Amen. So Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Um, so, the next question is, what did Jesus Christ do to save us? Uh, that's simple, the gospel. It's what they call the gospel. First Corinthians 15, uh, 1 to 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. You should have that bookmarked in your Bible. Um, so it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed, believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen. That's the Gospel. Um, that's the Gospel right there. And then you would ask me, hey, so what happened on the cross? So what happened on the cross when Jesus Christ was on the cross can be seen in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter 2, 24. 1 Peter 2, 24. The Bible says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. You are healed. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ bare our sins yeah. in his own body Amen. on the tree. Um, Isaiah 53 6 also gives a better picture of what happened on the cross. Isaiah 53 6. The Bible says, Isaiah 53 6. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So on the cross, Jesus Christ bare our sins, right. all our iniquities of the whole world. It's good. He bare them uh, on his body on the tree. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Um, then what happened after the cross? So right after Jesus Christ uh, died on the cross, what happened after that? Um, Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 31, 31. Acts 2.31 Acts 
the Bible says he seen this speak of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption some people say that Jesus Christ sold it and go to hell or whatever but the Bible says that his soul was not left in hell it right. was there obviously right. and neither did his flesh see corruption uh, Matthew 12, chapter 12, verse 40. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40 is a very clear indication of what happened uh, to Jesus Christ right after his body died. Matthew 12, 40. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says, Matthew 12, 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the world's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus Christ was in the heart of the earth in hell for three days and three nights. That's where he was after the cross. And then if you want to know, so that you ask what happened in hell, when Jesus Christ was in hell, what's the significance of him going there? That answer is answered in Isaiah 53.10. Isaiah 53.10. The Bible says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall, uh, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So the Bible says that Jesus' soul was made an offering for right. sin. Obviously, Jesus' soul, a soul isn't a physical thing you can touch, right? A soul is a, is a spiritual thing. Jesus' soul was made an offering for sin um, because it went to hell. If you read the Old Testament, uh, all sin offerings had two things in common. They all had to be killed and they all had to be burned with fire. Yes. So it shouldn't come by a surprise to us that Jesus Christ's soul was in hell. Um, what does the Bible say? Uh, 53.10 it is please the Lord to bruise him when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So Jesus Christ's soul was made an offering for sin. That's what the Bible says. Um, so why did he have to do this? Uh, I've had someone ask me, that, hey, why did Christ have to actually go to all this length? Like, some, kind of some, uh, extreme that somebody dies on the cross, then he has to go all the way to hell. Right. Three and few nights. Um, the reason is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Hebrews 9.22 The Bible says, um, And almost all things are by the law passed with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So the Bible says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Amen. Jesus Christ had to shed his blood for our sins to be remitted. That's what the Bible says. Uh, Leviticus chapter 4, 1 to 7. Yes. Uh, a small sample of the Old Testament law. Leviticus chapter 4, verses 1 to 7 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed to do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he hath sinned a young bullock, without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle the blood seven times before the Lord before the veil of the testimony. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the of the tabernacle of the congregation. So I had to read this so that you can we can all see what God's demands for sins were. This was a picture of salvation. Yep. God says that there must be remission of there must be shedding of blood for the remission of sins. So back in here, as a picture, the, the bull is slaughtered, the blood is sprinkled 
on the um, the blood is sprinkled on the shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord. The blood is sprinkled before the Lord, and you know then the the bullock is a sin offering. Mm -hmm. Now that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. He's the final offering for sin. Amen. He sprinkled his blood. Amen. And uh, his soul was made an offering for sin. It was a burnt offering. It's good. Um, <clears throat> so what happened after the payment? Now, after Jesus Christ paid for our sins, what happened was God was satisfied. And that can be seen in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. Isaiah 53, 10. The Bible says, uh, Yet it pleased the Lord, verses 10 to 11. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, uh, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. The Bible says that when Jesus Christ finished everything, he died on the cross, he went to hell, God was satisfied. Amen. Amen. The price had been paid. It's good. God is now satisfied. Now all that's remaining is uh, for us to get the ticket, if I may call it that way. That's yeah. the biblical word. It's good. All that's remaining is now for us to get the ticket to go to heaven. Somebody has paid for it. Jesus Christ paid a high price, he went on the cross, he went to hell yeah. for three days and three nights. God is now satisfied. Amen. So now, how do we get the ticket? The ticket, now that the gift has been paid for, and that gift, yes, the Bible says that salvation is a gift. Mm -hmm. Now that the gift of salvation has been paid for, how do we get this ticket? Okay, now before I answer that question, who decides the method by which we get the gift? You know, because uh, so uh, I've been soul winning before and uh, you know you hear someone telling you that uh, you know what I think I go to heaven by this way or I had someone say that this is how we go to heaven or I think if I do this I'll, 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 I'll get saved but who decides the, like the method by which you get that gift it's Isaiah 43 11 the Bible says in Isaiah 43 11 says, I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. So the Lord is saying that He is the Savior. He's the one who is going to tell us how we can be saved. Right. Now, get back to our question of how do we get the gift, or how do we get salvation? Uh, in three points, which are pretty much all the same thing, but uh, so point number one is belief. John 3.16 most famous verse in the Bible, but, uh, and I know that people in this room might be saying, you know what, John 3, 16, we're hearing this all the time, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, it's important. Yes, it is. It's important that we drill this down That's right. to our bones. Amen. And we know that salvation, you know, we know, we know what it says. Yeah. Because most of the world, 99% of the world doesn't believe what you're hearing today. Right. You know, um, most Baptist churches don't. So it's important that we know this. So let's turn to John 3, 16 and look at that again. <clears throat> John 3.16 um, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that once you believe on Christ you will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Um, Acts 16.30 Acts 16.30 The Bible says uh, and verse 31 it says and brought them out and said Sirs what must I do to be saved? And they say Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Amen. Um, John 3.15. John 3.15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And you know what? We could, we could go, we could spend here the whole night just reading this. But at, at the end of the day, there is one thing the Bible says we must do if we want to be saved. And that's we need to, we must, we don't need to, we actually must, we must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what the Bible says, that is the way we get the gift yep. of salvation. That is the ticket 
Mm. And that's what the Bible says. That's what God says. God didn't say, go and do some works. Go and do this, go and do that. No. He said, if thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's right. Um, also, calling upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 10, 13. Romans 10, 13. Uh, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, there's another so calling upon the name of the Lord is simply asking the Lord to save you. That's right. Um, the Bible says that anybody, it doesn't matter who you are, if you call upon the name of the Lord, uh, there's a psalm that explains that even further. It says, uh, the psalmist says, I call upon the name of the Lord, Lord save me. If you simply say, Lord save me, you shall be saved. Mm. That's what the Bible says. Um, an example of this is Luke chapter 23, verse 42. Luke chapter 23, verse 42. Luke 23, 42. <clears throat> the Bible says, um, so this is the thief who was on the cross. He said, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. That's, all the, that's what the thief did. A thief believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, hey, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And that was it. Mm -hmm. Daniel. Oops. I'm almost finished here. Anyways, so yeah. We get saved simply by calling upon the, uh, the name of the Lord. Simply by asking for it. For the gift of salvation. Amen. Um, now, works. What do works have to do with salvation? Let's go to Ephesians 2.8 quickly. Ephesians 2.8. The Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, every false religion out there, actually, um, methods of salvation cannot, throughout the whole world, can, can be grouped into two, works and faith. Every person out there who preaches a wrong salvation sim is simply saying, at the end of the day, that you must do some kind of work good work or bad work, whatever. You must do works to be saved. You must repent of your sins, stop sinning, whatever. They put that into, into salvation. But the Bible says that salvation is not of works. It makes that very clear That's right. in multiple places that I will not go through today. Um, one very powerful scripture is Romans 4, 1 to chapter, Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 6, which in my opinion is the clearest um, scripture about works as far as salvation is concerned. The Bible says, Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 6, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that walketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that walketh not, right. but believeth in him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So it's very clear. There is no works involved to get saved. Amen. All you have to do is believe on the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Um, then without mentioning the works of God. You know, somebody asked Jesus Christ, what are the works of God? Jesus Christ said, believe on him whom he hath sent. That's right. That's it. You do that, you're saved. And that is the will of the Father as well. Amen. Um, now, I need to talk of this subject. Um, you know, repenting of sins. Mm -hmm. The definition well, of the word, you know, this is a, a, a big obstacle when we go out soul winning. Uh, I'll quickly go to what the definition of repent is. And you know, you'll speak to a pastor or something like that, they'll give you their own definition of the word repent. But you know what, today we're using the Bible. We're going to yeah. see what the Bible, how it defines repent. Mm -hmm. uh, Exodus 32, chapter 32, verses 11 to 12. Exodus 32, 11 to 12. Exodus 32, 11 to 12. Um, the Bible says, And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, 
why doth thy works, uh, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Um, with great power and with a mighty hand. Whereof should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fear, fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Mm -hmm. um, and I could show you many other scriptures, but basically in the Bible to repent is simply to turn from something, whether it's God turning from this evil to not punish his people or from she's turning from, um, uh, or, or, or whether a man is turning from a good thing to a bad thing, or a bad thing to a good thing. Right. You know, I can be, I can say, I was gonna go to Soundwatch Baptist Church, but I repented and didn't go there. You know, mm -hmm. so in the Bible, <laughs> repent. <laughs> oh, I was going to go to um, the, the, a Catholic church and I repented and I went to Soundwatch Baptist That's Church. Better. Right? <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Um, so anyway, uh, repent is simply to turn. Um, and what I want to confirm today is repenting from sin mm. is works. That's right. Because when you turn from your sin, you stop doing it, putting in an effort. And uh, it sounds obvious, but this is the biggest obstacle to getting saved today. This is why the whole world is going to hell, mostly, right? Because everybody believes that they have to stop doing uh, their sins. They have to begin living a clean life. They have to do uh, these thing, kind of things to get saved. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Bible says, no, that is works. And works don't have anything to do with salvation. So if you go to Jonah 3.10, Jonah 3.10, the Bible says, I'll open it with you. Jonah 3.10. The Bible says, And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Okay. So God has said that turning from their evil way is works. He yep. saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. So in other words, when God said, saw them turning from their evil way, he called that works. Right. So turning from your evil way or the repenting of your sins is works, which right. is a good thing, but it's not necessary. In fact, it's bad. Like you don't have to do that for salvation. That's right. It's not necessary for salvation. Um, what we must do rather is we must repent and believe the gospel. Mm -hmm. So Matthew three two. That is the only time we must repent, as far as the topic of salvation is concerned. Matthew. Chapter 3, verses 2. This is Jesus Christ saying, He says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In another place, it says, Repent and believe the gospel. As far as salvation is concerned, you need to repent, turn, and stop believing other things and believe the gospel of Jesus right. Christ and get saved. Um, I have a couple of minutes left. Um, eternal security. This is a very important. Um, topic as far as salvation. Once we get saved, we are saved forever. Amen. Um, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verses 2, which is my favorite verse on eternal security. You can find literally so many. Uh, it says, John chapter 1, verse 12, sorry, verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, right. even to them that believe on his name. In other words, once somebody gets saved, they become a son of God. That's right. And everybody knows intrinsically that once you're a son, you can never become an, an unson. You're always going to be somebody's son. That's right. Um, now, my last two points. How do you know if somebody is saved or if you are saved yourself? You know? How to know if you're saved? Point number one. There is just four points under this. If you don't believe in the word of God, you're not saved. If you don't believe the scriptures in the King James Bible, it's simply not saved. It's that simple. Because the word of God is that which saves us. Jesus Christ said, I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in the word of God, you're not saved. Amen. Uh, point number two. If you believe it's by works, before or after salvation, you're not saved. So if you believe in your heart that you're saved by your good deeds, whether before you say a prayer or after you say a prayer, right. if in your mind you believe that your works have anything to do with your salvation, you're not saved. That's right. It's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 11, verses 5 to 6. 
Romans 11, verses 5. The Bible says, um, Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace then it is no more works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. The Bible says that grace is over here, works is over here. You're either saved by grace or you're saved by works. And by the way, in the Bible it gives you a challenge. It says that, hey, if you think you can get saved by works, go ahead. But mm -hmm. you will fail. That's right. Uh, this one man came to Jesus Christ asking, what must I do to get saved? Jesus Christ told him that, hey, you know, go and do the commandments. And Jesus Christ was right. Actually, if you do the commandments perfectly and you never sin in your whole life, you know, yeah, you'll be saved, but unfortunately, no man can do that. We're right. all sinners. Amen. So the only way a man or a woman, boy or girl, can get saved is A, if they never sin, which maybe only happens in the womb, or B, they must put their faith on Jesus Christ. They must trust on Him and ask Him to save them. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says. So another point is, if you don't believe in eternal security, you're not saved. And the Bible verse for that is 1 John 5, 10 to 11. Mm -hmm. 1 John uh, 5, 10 to 11. That is why we preach eternal security. Uh, the Bible says, uh, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth, he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his son so the bible is saying that um if you don't believe this record that god has given to us you're calling god a liar that's right so the bible is saying that you must believe that record that god has given to us eternal life Amen. and even just logically thinking if you think you can lose your salvation it simply means that you think that there is something you can do to lose your salvation you see and eternal security is at the heart of the gospel Jesus Christ said everlasting life. So right. You must believe that. You must know that he has saved you. Uh, you must believe that Jesus Christ has saved you and is forever. Because it's not of yourself, it's of him. Um, again, another thing is, if you, don't, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, you don't say, because you're not saved. You know, if you think Jesus Christ is just a man who was right. sinning or whatever. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 24, John chapter 8, verse 24. You must believe that Jesus Christ is God. It's just wrapped up in there, right with the gospel. Uh, it says, uh, chapter 8, verse 24, in John, it says, I say therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Yeah. The Bible is clear. You must believe that Jesus Christ is whom he, he, is whom he claims to be. Otherwise, if you don't, he has said himself, you will die in your sins. Um, again, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is really the Son of God, again, you're not saved. Um, the Bible says in Acts 8, 37, this, this is demonstrated in Acts 8, 20, 37. Acts chapter 8, verses 37. <clears throat> so, and Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So, Philip put a prerequisite for, for him, for this Ethiopian eunuch to get saved. He said, You know what? If thou believest with all thine heart, thou, uh, thou mayest. And he mm -hmm. said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. That simply means that Philip was telling this guy that, hey, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, yeah, yeah, then you might be baptized. You'll be saved. That's right. This, he, this, he confessed that he believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Um, so you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In, and that's how you can know that you're saved or that someone is saved, if they confess that. Um, so in, in, con to, in, in conclusion... Um, that's, that's the message of salvation Amen. but to conclude this I just want to prove to you today I want to prove to you that 
people are, are not preaching this message. Here, what I have here before me is the, uh, I have before me here the affirmation of faith of the Baptist General Conference of Canada. Mm -hmm. This is the Baptist General Conference of Canada. I went in the internet, I looked up, you know, the biggest Baptist organization I could see. I did not look at the Catholic Church, you know, because that's pretty obvious. Right. The biggest Baptist um, organization I could see. It's called, they call themselves the BGC, Baptist General Conference of Canada. Now, this is their affirmation of faith, okay? Now, this is what they say about uh, salvation. We believe that all people are sinners by nature and by choice and are therefore under condemnation. We believe that those who repent of their sins mm. and trust Jesus Christ as Savior are regenerated by the Holy Spirit. What did we just see the Bible saying? These guys are saying that if you repent of your sins plus trust Jesus Christ, you're saved. Right. You see? And this is, a, this is the biggest, this is, this is, a, this is a Baptist, Baptist General Conference of Canada. Yep. So you can see that here, they are telling you that, hey, you must do works and believe on Jesus Christ. You see yep. that? Yep. But the Bible says something different. The Bible right. says you must only trust on Christ. Amen. That's what the Bible says. So that goes to show you that what's out there, you know, that everybody is, most people are preaching a false salvation. Mm -hmm. you know? um, out there have been soul winning for a while now. I've only come across less than three people who are saved, mm -hmm. you know, and I've been doing this for a while now. Um, so it just goes to show you what our Baptist churches are preaching, what our Pentecostal churches are preaching, they're all preaching a false salvation. Right, right. Um, what I have here though now is uh, just to show you for, for more proof, I have here a IFB KJV church. This is Bible Way Baptist Church in Regina, Saskatchewan. Independent Fundamental Baptist Church, just like sound words, King James only, okay? This is, they're, gonna, they're, they're trying to tell us how, what we must do to be saved. So they start out by saying, realize that God loves you, no one is good, you see yourself as a sinner, all's nice and good. Realize that Christ paid for your sins and died in your place, all good. Now, this is what they say. Um, you must be, they say, be willing to repent of your sins, you know? Uh, and that if you do that, he will give you eternal life right now. So you can see that this is an independent yep. fundamental Baptist church. And they're telling us to turn from our sins to do works so that we can get saved. You see? So this goes to show you that this message I'm, I'm just told you today is very important. Yep. Um, hopefully, in my lifetime, I never come to see that day where sound words is preaching something like this. Amen. You know, let this video be recorded <laughs> and let it be known that sound words, we go with what the Bible says. Yes. The Bible says that there is no works with salvation. It's not of works, it is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. It's only by believing on Christ Jesus, it's only by calling upon the name of the Lord that we are saved. And um, I'll finish off with this. What is the will of the Father? John 6:40. John chapter 6 verse 40. Um, the Bible says, John chapter 6 verses 40. The Bible says, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. 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 Amen.